Hello everyone, welcome back to Brombird News. Interesting things happening here in my backyard. As you know, some birds never visit bird feeders and those that do come to bird feeders on a regular basis still rely on natural food. This is what they're genetically programmed for. So in the past two weeks, I've been watching birds interact with the habitat that we've created for them in our backyard. Evening grosbeaks have shown up here three times in the past two weeks. Once was actually during the great backyard bird counts. Yay, that was so much fun. So the first time we saw them on our acacia trees because these trees produce these pods with seeds. So grosbeaks were helping themselves to that. The second time we saw them in our cedar hedges nibbling on something there as well. And only on the third time did they actually get closer to our bird feeders and then some of them ventured to pick up a few sunflower seeds on the ground so hopefully the next time they will come to my bird feeders and we can take some beautiful pictures of them. Now, American tree sparrows. As I've told you before, this is the time of the year where you will see them in your backyard. Well, I have flocks of them in my backyard every single day. They love our cedar hedges because these trees uh, shed something so the, the American tree sparrows land in cedars and then land on the ground and pick up bits and pieces under our cedar hedges as well as our uh, white pines. And then we have a, a maple tree that somehow planted itself inside one of our cedar hedges. Uh, it survived, so we've actually had to trim a little bit of our cedar hedges to let it grow. Now it's nice and beautiful. And uh, last week I caught a male northern cardinal nibbling on little buds of that uh, maple tree. It stayed there for a good hour, and when it was done, then it went to my bird feeders. So since we're going into spring, and probably a lot of you will be thinking what to plant in your backyard, please consider buying bushes and trees that are native to your area and something that will provide food and shelter for your birds all year around. And another question about birds singing at weird times. This time Elizabeth is wondering why a house finch would sing in the middle of the night. Hi Elizabeth. I am aware that some of our songbird species do sing in the middle of the night. For example, I recall hearing a male white-throated sparrow singing at 3 a.m. on a starry night in the Laurentian Mountains in Quebec during late spring. But this is the first report I've had for house finches. Sometimes if a bird is suddenly awakened by a noise like thunder, fireworks, or earthquake, even a sudden shaking of its roosting tree, it may burst into song. However, the usual thought for this behavior, that is, it is a desperate single male singing to attract a female who has perhaps lost her mate to a predator through the night. Alternatively, while that might have been entirely true in that particular case some 30 years ago, there is a newer but far more insidious explanation for this behavior, which makes good sense to me. You see, most songbirds belt out their songs as part of the dawn chorus, starting almost before the sun even appears over the horizon. It's triggered by a combination of a bird's internal clock and the very first rays of light. There are many reasons postulated for that behavior. It could be that their song carries further in the crisp dawn air, that there is less competition from other sounds, and or that it's too early to feed, so why not sing instead? And some birds not only sing in the early light of morning, but also well into dusk. So they may become used to singing in dim light. Now here's the bad part. In today's world, we're faced with a growing amount of light pollution, so that the bird's internal clocks might be getting fooled by light emanating from street lights or even a flood lamp. Another possibility is that these days with noise pollution being so prevalent, it's entirely possible that some birds are electing to sing in the quiet of night to get their message out. And yet another suggestion is that light pollution is somehow altering the schedules of urban birds such that they're singing in the middle of the night. Or it could be some sort of a combination of all of these factors. In any case, it's not a good thing.
Speaking of uh, native plants, we're getting ready to start seeds for our vegetable garden here indoors, actually. So we were uh, trying to buy seeds from a local Canadian supplier. And then I thought, uh, let me see if they carry any uh, native flower seeds. You know, every summer I try to plant at least one or two native flowers in my garden. And sometimes I do struggle because a lot of garden centers and nurseries carry ornamental and decorative flowers, but not necessarily native. So I was actually thrilled to see how many varieties uh, these guys had. So I got a few. Uh, they actually recommend starting them indoors a few weeks before, you know, the, the last frost. So I'm actually really excited to plant these and then to have nice seedlings. So when it's quite warm outside, I can see where I can plant them in my garden. So my environment a challenge to you is to find two flowers that are native to your area and plant them in your garden this summer. European robins in the UK are ticked off by the increased traffic, not because it makes them late getting to work, but because of the noise. A team of researchers in the UK collaborated with a crew in Turkey to study how urban and rural robins react to traffic noise. You see, like our robins here in North America, which are actually thrushes and not remotely related to the robins in Europe, these little birds are quite territorial and they use songs and calls to ward off intruding birds. The scientists found that as traffic noise increased, the birds upped their physical aggression toward intruders. Essentially, the birds have to overcompensate when the traffic noise drowns out their territorial songs. The research team also compared urban robins with their rural cousins in a laboratory setting. They piped in artificial traffic noise and provided a 3D model of an intruding robin complete with song recordings. While the urban robins were found to be more aggressive than rural robins, the latter also upped their aggression levels with louder traffic noise. But when the noise became even heavier, the urban birds learned to reduce their call rate, saving energy. The rural birds with much less experience with traffic noise had not yet learned to do this and instead just became more physically aggressive. None of this is good, of course. Besides just making it harder for the birds to defend their territories, increasing their physical aggression can lead to injuries from fighting and striking physical objects like windows, but also attract the attention of predators. Maybe as the virtually silent electric cars become more popular, this problem might hopefully solve itself. Can you find a bird here? Do you know which bird it is? It's the American Bittern. I call them the king of camouflage. Not an easy bird to spot because of the colors of its plumage and to study, and also because of its preferred habitat, thick wetland and marsh vegetation. Right now, if you were to look for one, you'll have to go to southern states. They will start migrating to breed in Canada and mid states, sort of in March. My only encounter with them was a few years ago when we went canoeing in our local wetlands and I haven't seen one since. Dan Hutchinson photographed them several times in British Columbia and so has Steve Swearingen in Texas. As you can see, there is not much variation in plumage geographically. American bitterns are herons, but unlike many other herons, they barely ever perch in trees. They have a lot of patience and are able to stand in one spot for a long time waiting for their food to show up. They camouflage mainly to fool their prey, not to avoid becoming prey. And they eat, well, anything that you'd normally find in wetlands, you know, grasshoppers, dragonflies, eels, water beetles, tadpoles frogs and so on and if you cannot spot them in your area you'll definitely recognize them by their song their call check this out comes to family matters, it's the females that do all the work from building a nest, normally over standing water, to feeding her chicks. Well, that's it. That's all for now. Let me know what kind of native trees or flowers you are planning on planting in your backyard this summer. Take care, everyone. I'll catch you in two weeks.